Constructional Engineering Association of South Africa Chairperson Rajan Govinda joins me to discuss the future of the association and how it links to Industry 4.0. If you could give me a brief overview of the CEA as well as the plans the association has for the future, especially considering moving into Industry 4.0. Great. The um, CEA is an organization that's been around for a long time, has its roots as far back as 1936 within the metal and engineering industry, uh, evolved over many years um, and over iterations in terms of name, um, and then uh, far back as 1986 changed to the Construction Engine Engineers Association of South Africa, um, representing a, a fair amount of uh, employers and employees consequently. Um, currently sitting at around 58,000 employees being represented by the association in the industry itself. Uh, whilst that's a, a, quite a phenomenal number, uh, you know, one could gather that this has changed over the last few years. At one point, the association represented 70,000 odd employees. So that is obviously an indication of where the industry has come from and where it's going to. Um, having said that, you know, I think uh, the CEA has a lot of uh, opportunities to influence the changes. Uh, and one of that is to actually look at how do we lobby with government in terms of uh, stimulating uh, our industry in particular, but also steel infrastructure projects, which will create the kind of stimulus that we need for the industry, for the association, but also for the country itself. How does that affect the future of the association regarding technology? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the interesting things for us is, uh, uh, interesting but also scary things, is that uh, Industry 4.0 is coming, uh, coming at us at a rate of knots. Um, but I don't believe that we're preparing ourselves for it. In fact, our preparation should have started 10, maybe even more years before. Um, and I think that's both from an industry point of view, from an association point of view, but also from a government point of view and a tertiary institution point of view. I think we all have uh, a part to play in terms of influencing that. Um, my, 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 uh, my gut feel tells me that I think we're a bit late, however we need to start. Um, and so I think we need to have some kind of uh, conversations, but more importantly plan, and then execute on the plan in terms of how do we prepare our industry for Industry 4.0 and the changes that come there. You know, I think we hear some frightening stats uh, that talk about some positions, some jobs will in five years no longer exist in the current shape, form or style that they're in at the moment. So I think we need to start preparing for that uh, and not just uh, assume and, and, and take what comes at us, but be part of that change. So I've always had the saying that, uh, you know, the best way to prepare for the future is to be part of the change. Um, so um, I think it's important that we do that. As an association, I think we've got uh, some, you know, some huge uh, boots to fill in terms of influencing not only government policy, but how do we as an industry change? You know, how do we need to uh, influence uh, the form, the shape of how we do things going forward? You know, the, uh, there's been some very positive um, uh, growth spurts within our industry, certainly from a, a metals and engineering point of view. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, there's some stats that show that towards the end of last year, towards the end of 18, 2018, there's some positive gro uh, shoots that are coming through from uh, from a, uh, a stimulus point of view. Uh, and the forecast coming from the economists within our industry also shows that 2019, 2020, and perhaps even beyond, looks, uh, there looks like there's going to be some positive growth within our industry. And that then, of course, influences both upstream and downstream industries within our environment. So I think those, that bodes well for us as an industry. What impact do you think tertiary education and higher education plays in the role of Industry 4.0? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, uh, I'm not sure that we as a, as a country and certainly from a tertiary institution point of view and a higher education point of view have actually embraced this, understand it um, and have explored all the uh, opportunities that lie ahead of us. Uh, and I say opportunities because I don't think this is a problem, I don't think it's a challenge, I think it's an opportunity for us to get to the forefront of it. Um, we as a CEA will do our bit in terms of influencing that, but I think we, have, we all have to have 
a, a, an equal stake in how we find a solution for the way forward as far as Industry 4.0 is concerned. I think also equally so is the, uh, the Department of Labor because uh, you know if this doesn't uh, if we don't formulate the right kind of solution and, and structure around this, uh, we could find ourselves with an even burgeoning problem around unemployment in the future. It's an opportunity for us to, to skill people for Industry 4.0, but also to give people alternative jobs, uh, skill them uh, in terms of alternative jobs. And I think, you know, one of the things that we do well is to give people skills, but what we don't do is transfer that skills to competence. Competence, in my opinion, is you have a skill, can you now translate that skill into the work that you do, and how do you do your job markedly better than you did it before? So I think that's important. Well, thank you very much. Yes. And um, we wish you all the best for the future with the association, especially with the change of hand that's taking place. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's, again, you know, uh, history teaches us that, uh, you know, we, we are what we are because of the legacy that has taken place and we're grateful for the, uh, the uh, certainly the chairpersons and the association members uh, in the past and one of them is Louis Breckenridge who has been an institution both from a CIFSA point of view but also a CEA point of view and we wish him well in his retirement um, and the welcoming of Anthony Boy who has taken over as executive director for the association and I think you know even us as an organization um, you know I, from a company perspective you know, we're seeing a nice growth spurt coming into the future, and I think that's something that bodes well. And one of the things that I'm going to impress on us as an organization is that we are going to refuse to participate in any recession, whether it's local or global. <laughs>